Hey everybody out there in internet land, this is Keith Tanner here from Fly Miata and we're bringing you a special Facebook Live this week. Why is it special? Because like so many other people in the country and around the world, we are staying home. And so therefore you are not getting this update from Fly Miata World Headquarters. You are getting this update from my own personal shop and I am flying without a net. I don't have anybody else running the camera. You're going to see all sorts of terrible, terrible camera work today, I promise. So. I'll give you the quick virus update first because, you know, everyone wants to know, right? Fly Miata is open. Uh, we are taking orders. Um, we are shipping parts. We are answering customer support emails. We are doing everything we can to, uh, to keep serving our customers while keeping our employees safe. Um, the one thing we can't do right now is we can't enter phone calls. Our phone system is having a little trouble dealing with people working from home. So if you need to get in touch with us with product questions or questions about a well, installation, technical problems, or even complaints about the quality of the Facebook Live video feed, then uh, please send us an email, hit us up on Facebook, um, direct messages, Instagram, smoke signals, whatever, but unfortunately not telephones. So, there's that out of the way. You've heard all that stuff before. We are shipping parts. That's good. Here's what we're talking about today. This is Miata number 338. It's, uh, it was built in April 89, which means it's just about to turn 31 years old. And it's been in my family for over 20 years. It, uh, it's an interesting little time capsule, which is why, why we figured we'd show it off today. Um, this, uh, this car is one that my father found on a Hyundai used car lot back in 1999. And at the time, there weren't a lot of ratty Miatas. You know, the, the 1990 Miatas were still, they were only nine years old. The NB was a brand new thing. And, uh, and Miatas were all second cars. They were all beautifully cared for. There was... There were no ratty ones, except for this one. This one was a little rough. It had some rust on the on the rear rockers, which we all know about now, but at that point was just starting to show up in Canada. Um, it had some faded paint. Uh, it had blown rear shocks. That was pretty obvious as soon as I drove it. But that serial number, we couldn't we couldn't leave the serial number alone. So my dad bought it, took it home, polished it. it looked like a murder scene. You've seen what happens when you polish this red paint. You get the red stuff all over. Oh man. Um, he polished it, and it's been in the country, as I said, for uh, for over 20 years. It was a support vehicle for the first time we ran the Targa Newfoundland in 2008. Uh, it's been cross-country multiple times. Um, it came out and spent a winter with me here in Colorado as we uh, as I rebuilt the engine because the rings were tired. Another thing you just didn't see at the time. And, um, yeah, it just, it's just been loved, but it's a little bit of a time capsule. It's really kind of interesting because... When we got it back in 99, I did a bunch of work that needed to be done. We took it down. Oh, I forgot to mention it's been to the, uh, it was at the, the big Miata World event in, in Dallas in 1999, the 10th anniversary. We have pictures of this thing parked beside Miata number 500,000, which was brand new at the time. Um, anyhow, when we first got it, I did all the usual upgrades. It's got a set of Coney shocks on it. It's got, uh, it's got some Fly Miata sway bars. Actually, it might be Jackson Racing sway bars, given the age. Um, and... And it had a few little modifications, but then it just stayed the same. So it's really kind of interesting to drive after all these years of, of working um, on hyper-modified Miatas and crazy stuff. It's really kind of nice to go back and see what where we came from. And one of the things I'm going to show you on this car is it's got some period accessories. Uh, I've invited the guys over at uh, Rare and Vintage Miata Parts Facebook group to watch this because I think there's some stuff on here they might enjoy. So let's start with an overall walk around the car. And uh, hit me up with any questions. I work best when you ask me questions. And uh, I, will, I will do my best to answer them. Here comes that great videography. Can I turn this around? I can't. There we go. So. Oh, look, there's another car. We might talk about that other car sometime in another, uh, another conversation. Let's just call this a before and after. Because the Targa Miata was a red NA at one point. So, number 338 is it's a Canadian car. So didn't, I don't think we had A packages, B packages, etc. But it was the fairly common, I guess it would be an A package. Uh, it had power mirrors, or it had manual mirrors, but it had power steering and alloys. And as you can see, it's in pretty good shape. It's a good 10-footer. Um, there were parts of the car that were repainted back in the day. And uh, they have uh, they've got some clear coat damage, which hasn't done any favors. But generally speaking, as NAs go, it's pretty slick. Wee. I'm sorry, I can't get very far away from this. If I open the garage door, you won't be able to see anything because it'll be just a lot of, heat, a lot of light in one place. But 
um, bone stock in every way that really matters. Uh, you know, it might have coney shocks and FM sways, but it's got stock springs. So this is how a stock 1990 should sit. Uh, mileage on the car is just over 100,000 miles. Um, we'll check that later when you look at the uh, and look at the odometer. But I can tell you it's healthy enough that when I went to pick this thing up from Ottawa earlier this year, I jumped in it, drove it straight across the country, well, two countries, um, without a hiccup. 2,000 miles in about two and a half days, and the thing didn't even blink. Biggest problem I had was the driver's side mirror started folding in when I had hurricane-level winds in Kansas. You always have hurricane-level winds in Kansas. So here's something, is something you don't see in a lot of U.S. cars. This is a Canadian car. They didn't have airbags in 1990. So this is the stock steering wheel, which honestly I think is a really attractive little wheel. Um, it's very comfortable to drive. You can get a nice view of the uh, gauges. And it also, something not everyone knows, they use different combo switches. They're sort of combo switches you see in older protégés, but only the non-airbag cars have these and they feel great. They've got a click, a really solid um, feel to them. You don't get in the uh, airbag stuff. And I actually like to retrofit these. <laughs> I like to retrofit these where I can because they feel so good. Um, the downside is, of course, if you're going to retrofit these, you've also got to change the steering column surround and the steering column, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, another little thing these have is this knee protector on the bottom is made of plastic and weighs ounces as opposed to the American one, which is, or the airbag one, which is uh, very heavy and uh, made of depleted uranium, I think. Let's look around the interior a little bit more. This is vintage. Look at this. This is untouched. That is a factory radio. I think it has the Jeff Anderson modification, which is to make the factory uh, headrest speakers work better. You can't see it by looking at it, but it does. And of course, I said we have vintage accessories. Here's how you make your CD player, your Discman, work with your old school non-CD uh, <laughs> non radio. Kind of goofy fun, but hey, it's fun. It also has, and this is something... Yeah, I think Moss Motors probably still sell... Oh, you can't see it. I uh, still sell those. There's a... Oh, there's a uh, net from a Z3 in there. Or since it's a Canadian car from a Z3. Uh, that is really handy for putting... Putting stuff up against the... Transmission tunnel. Can we see it? Let's get a light. There it is. Look at that. We're sneaking up on it. You can buy those from the BMW dealer. Like I said, I'm pretty sure... Moss Motors uh, sells these as well, but they're very, very handy. I actually have one in the race car as well. Uh, Curtis has asked for a, a uh, right up on the steering column swap. Uh, I believe it basically is take everything off that is not the right steering column, put everything else that is, that is. Although you've also got to change and rewire the windshield washer motor. There's some weird differences in these cars. But here's something I'm going to show you that you don't see very often these days. That is a factory tunnel cover. Not a boot cover, not just the cover for the top that, that keeps, it from, uh, keeps it from taking damage, but that's an actual full-on factory tunnel. And I will uh, un unroll that for you in a moment, once I'm done showing you what's on the inside of the car. Let's uh, take a look under the hood. This is again... Where are we? There we are. There we go. This is again a time capsule. We have a k and filter, just there for durability. We have an old school Fly Miata uh, shock tower brace. Actually, it's old enough that it was actually the dealer alternative when we put that on. I have some of those stickers for anybody who wants to restore one of these things. Otherwise, that is a standard engine bay, but look at this, Canadian car. It's got an enormous washer tank. Canadian cars always have these huge washer tanks. Apparently, Canadians are paranoid about running out of washer fluid. So, no worries about that. That thing is huge. Also, being a Canadian car, it has daytime running lights. The turn indicator filament runs all the time, and then when you go to turn, it turns itself off, blinks, comes back on again. So you could always spot the Miatas when they first came out, because in Canada, they were some of the first cars to have daytime running lights, and they were done with that orange filament, so they were really easy to spot on the road. Now, I have done a few more modern upgrades, I'll show you in a moment. It's running, uh, it's running GE Nighthawk 
LEDs because I love headlights. I love good headlights. It used to have um, H4s in it, hella H4 E codes, but I pulled those out. Question, does the Canadian model have fog lights? Uh, it was an option. This car may or may not have a fog light switch. At least one of my Canadian Miatas, and I do have more than one, has a factory fog light switch in it that I use for other things, big old extra driving lights. But uh, yes, it does have the wiring for a fog light. You know, the little, little power up put is stashed down here somewhere. It's been a while since I went looking for one, but it was available. And yes, it does have a complete and untouched and unmodified and original equipment dipstick. <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you take care of a car for 20 years. Everything you do is just done carefully. It, it really lasts. It's uh, something I learned from my grandfather and my father uh, carried on. I wish I could say the same for myself. This is for the tonneau cover that's coming up. And we have another one over here. Ooh, look at that. Right by that rare VIN. Let's, uh, I don't think we have anything else to show outside the car, so I'll tell you what. I am going to flip this around. Hello, everybody. And I will swap out that tonneau cover for you. So you can see what it looks like. I'll turn off the light in the background. Off we go. Off we go. All right, hopefully you can see me okay. Hopefully you can hear me okay. So this is how you install what wheels and tires. Oh, that's from, that's from one of my, uh, that's from one of my coworkers. Every time we put a picture of a car up, someone asks what wheels and tires and what seats. So these are, uh, Uno Royal Tiger Claws in the rare 184 6014 size. Um, very popular tire. As you can see, it's a, it's a very high grip option. And the wheels are the uh, factory alloys. I must admit, when I was cleaning out, uh, cleaning out my parents' garage about a year ago, I came across the winter, the storage wheels and tires that we use for this thing. And I gave them away to a local Miata um, enthusiast who was going to use them for something else. And as I was giving them away, I'm loading them in this car, I realized that they're the original wheels for this car which were made by a different manufacturer. They weren't Enkies. They were, I'll have to look it up. They were manufactured I'd never heard before and they had the manufacturer date of 389. Should have hung on to those, but you know what? I don't really care. It looks right. And this is not, this car is never gonna make it to Pebble Beach. It's not perfect. So how do we keep the, one of the questions, how do we keep the tunnel level and not squirt at the boot? I'm not sure I understand that question. You might have to elaborate on that a little bit more for me. But uh, this is, I'll show you. It was hard to do backwards. There's the tunnel cover folded up. This is the everyday setup. And when I was going to, uh, to school, I had this on my own Miata, my own 1990, and I use it all the time. Um, I wouldn't bother putting the pot top up when I parked. It's an old school kind of accessory, the sort of thing that you would have on an old MG, because MGs were hard to put the top up on. They were a royal pain in the butt. So you had these tunnel covers, which lets you cover the interior up. Kind of an affectation on Miatas, I will admit, but it's kind of fun. I'll show you some tricks with it. So I'll see if I can give you guys a view on how to put this up. I'm going to warn you, it's probably been 15, 20 years since I put this uh, on, so I might be a little rusty, but we'll see. I'll start with the passenger side. This is where it gets a little awkward. You've got to slide the seat all the way forward and then lean it all the way back. This is because this being a factory tonneau, doesn't have bumps for the seat cover or for the seats and then it just hooks on these tunnels and these uh, little 10 ax snaps there we go there's the snap of the mirror I will show you this later in in a little more a uh, little more detail this is where it'd be kind of handy to have Travis following me around with a phone but Travis has to stay home oh it's been a while there we go Okay, so you probably didn't see that, but I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, one of the questions, is the rear diff cover smooth? It certainly is. Uh, this is an early car. This is about as early as they get. So it does have the smooth rear diff. Uh, Brian has been in the Miata world for a long time. I recognize that name. So uh, yes, Brian, this is all the old stuff it has. So there you go. This is kind of fun. I have driven across Ontario, Canada into wintertime in sub-freezing temperatures with the top covered up like this. You'd think it'd be warmer, but you know what? <laughs> There's still a lot of airflow. It looks cool though. Um, 
certainly get you some weird looks. But if you want a sort of vintage feel, this is a great way to drive around. And you can tell this is a, a Mazda factory accessory because it doesn't have the big hump. The Mazda ones, the ones you used to get from other manufacturers, they had a hump there that uh, made it easier to put the seat on. Oops. A little loose there. Um, made it easier to put the seats, put the covers on, but didn't look as smooth. So now I'll put the other side on. You can get another shot of my nose. Oh, look, there's the rest of the shot. There we go. Hello, everybody. I'm making this up as I go. Did you figure that out? So, fold the seat back. One of the things I did on my original Miata, which is parked just outside, I've had that thing since 1993, is I put little tape marks, or little paint marks, on the seat, uh, on, the, on a couple of spots on the seat, so I could put it back in the exact same place every time when I went to put the seat back in place. Sort of thing you learn, you're doing this all the time. I wonder if I go get, a, go get in that car, if it'll still fit me. Let's hope so. So I'll give you a close-up of the 10X in a moment. Interesting trivia note, these 10X fasteners screw into the dashboard. You probably noticed those little nubs you've got in the dashboard. That's what they're for. They're for this factory accessory. And they take a 9mm wrench. It's probably the only part in the car that needs a 9mm wrench. So next time you're doing a Miata trivia contest, 9mm wrench, that's where it's from. Flip around. There we go. We're part way on. Now it's just a matter of putting this on the factory snap. There we go. Zip this up. You can see that's been used. Look at that poor thing. And then zip up the center. And there we go. All bundled up. Not completely theft secure, but I've got to say it was enough to leave me uh, to leave me um, safe. Uh, we do have a question here. Was the wheel company Toby? You know, it was a four letter. It may have been something like that. Um, honestly, I don't, uh, I don't recall specifically, but. So I will show you another accessory. Now that I've put the top up, you're not gonna be able to use as much. Atlantic Design. I don't know what they called this exactly. They made luggage bags that used to go on the back, but this goes behind the seats and works sort of like a wind blocker and gives you, gives you a place to store things. It's not quite a cooler. It's a little bit, uh, little bit insulated. Not really waterproof. It'll leak on you. Oh, look at that, Dad. Left some stuff in here. Um, but it was actually a really convenient little, little toy to have when you're driving around. It would snap in and it would sit in front of the seat. Even when you had the factory boot cover on, it would sit in there. And uh, you can you know, keep maps in it. Really convenient little accessory. Atlantic Design is gone now, but it was a nice, uh, nice little thing to have. Another thing that this car has that you can't see because I put the top on is there's a, a window protector on here. It's basically a little sandwich of padded vinyl that covers the window when you put it down. And you would not believe it. This thing has a window that's at least 20 years old and it looks new. Part of that is a Canadian car. Part of that is the fact that it was always covered when it was parked outside. But part of it is the fact that it was always... I'll get this out. We'll just pull this thing off quickly. Been a few years. I'm just gonna put this down. Um, well, there's gonna be some great screenshots in this one. I will show you that. Uh, show you that great little boot cover. I have a question. Atlantic Design did make a full luggage set. We're getting all the old school guys out here. Um, yeah, Atlantic Design made a full fitted luggage set that. Worked, I think, with the spare tire and the trunk and everything. It was, uh, it was really nice. I don't know what happened to them. I suspect Atlanta Design is, they were probably a one or two person shop and somebody just decided to retire. I think you could get them to brainstorm back in the day. Anyhow, I'll pull this boot cover up. If anybody's really interested, I'll show you the right way to put a factory, put a factory, um, whatchamacallit cover on. So that thing actually comes with a nice little bag it goes in so you can store it nicely. But here is that 
top cover. Someone needs to put these back in production. This is nice. It's felted on the inside. Um, it uh, protects the protects the window, so you unzip the window, drop it inside there, and like I said, this thing, that is, I'm pretty sure, the original top on this car. And uh, it looks, looks basically new. It's got a little bit of sun damage, a little bit of fading on the inside, but look at this window. Perfect. Now I've got a question here about the hardtop boot. I've never actually seen one of those hardtop boots because uh, I must admit I have the tendency to take the soft tops out of my cars and I put the hot drops on. <laughs> but that is actually one of the projects I have for this car. This is the hardtop off my original 1990, which had stripes on it, famously. And uh, I'm taking the stripes off because that's 3M seven-year vinyl that was put on in 1996. So it's a little, looking a little rough. But I'm not driving that car these days, and so I thought I would transfer this one over to little Miata 338 so I could uh, so I can drive it in the wintertime, and I like Miatas with hardtops. So hit me up with any more questions. That is pretty much all I think I've got going on right now. I, there may be some other little hidden gems on the thing that I've forgotten about. One thing about those lights, they make the front end look even derpier than they really are. But... Uh, if you want to know anything else about Canadian Miatas, and most of the European ones were closer to this than the, uh, the American ones were at the time of the first couple of years of production, I will show them to you. Um, we can take pictures of this thing. This car, my father passed away last year, so this car came over to me, and uh, part of the plan with it is not a full-on restoration, but to keep it as a daily driver and sort of a check to remind myself you know, why it is we fell in love with these things in the first place. You know, it's fun to drive this thing hooning around the street with a cage and harnesses and making all sorts of terrible, terrible noises, punishing tires because they are evil. But you got to remember, this is where we started. And it's, it's really good to go back and just sort of remind yourself why we fell in love with these cars in the first place. So number 338 is, is going to get maintained. It's going to get driven. It's being imported into the States now. I'm still working on the paperwork. But it will never look dramatically different than it does right now. This car is going to be... It's going to stay in the family. And then... Well... I'm going to swing this around again one more time. Ooh, there's an upcoming product. You'll see those in a bit. Okay, so... There you go. There's me yammering on about my dad's old Miata. I like it. It's fun to drive, like I said. Driving it across country last year, or I guess it was last fall, was not much of a punishment, especially when all the leaves were changing color. It was a good drive. One of the things that came with the car is I have my dad's um, notebooks for these things, and he kept track of not only the usual things like the mileage, but also how many, when he drove, how much time he had the to top down. You know, it was just, it was, it was beautiful. Um, so that's everything for this. Uh, we will be doing more Facebook Lives every week, uh, Thursdays at 2 o'clock Mountain. Is that right? Yes. Uh, I'll be doing more Facebook Lives. Put any suggestions or any requests you have in the comments. We will. Uh, I'm going to probably talk about the theory of sway bars. I'll give a tour of that little stripey thing next door, maybe. I happen to have another couple of V8-powered cars kicking around here that might be interesting. And um, ask us what you want to see. So again, we know that everyone's stuck at home. Um, staying safe trying to flatten the curve, hashtag this, hashtag that. We want everyone to be careful out there because we want our Miata customers to stay our Miata customers, and we're going to be uh, staying open as much as we can to make sure that we, uh, we take care of you. And we'll try to bring you as much fun content as we can, like tours of cars like this. Thanks for your attention. We will uh, see you again next week, and like I said, hit us up with any questions in the comments. Have a good day, everyone.